would turn your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 40. Again, it is good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And as uh, Brother Larry was talking, the thought come to me about uh, Brother Kraft down in Mexico. And you know what a, a great thing it is, a great privilege it is for us to be able to live in a, uh, in a place where it's still halfway law-abiding, but down there, I, I mean, it's, there's nothing no more as far as law, and uh, it's, a, it's a terrible place to live, and uh, only the Lord, God knows how to take care of and to uh, get him through this thing, so uh, again, I encourage you to, to pray for him every day and, uh, and uh, just continue praying for him because the Lord knows what he does. The Lord knows if he needs him to stay around. And, um, and uh, so it's, it's in the hands of the Lord. But uh, of course, that's, uh, we all realize too that our lives is in the hands of the Lord. And uh, uh, he can reach down anytime he wants to and tap us on the shoulder and, and say, you're not doing like I want you to do. Or, or, or he, can, he, can, he can let us know some things. So uh, we need to be much more in in touch with the Lord and have, have a desire to serve him in a great way. All right, in chapter 40 of the book of Psalms, starting in verse 1, David is the writer of this, and uh, he's talking, he's, you know, David had a lot of problems and troubles. And, but in verse 1 of chapter 40, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Amen. Now, uh, when I seen this, uh, the Lord said, <clears throat> I want you to teach this. Uh, and the word patience, patiently uh, caught my eye, and I, uh, I got to look at the word patiently up and the meanings of it and everything, and uh, inclined. And patiently, uh, he, he, he waits patiently for us in that uh, he, uh, he, understands, he understands what we're made out of. He understands our physical body and how that it is, it is not saved. He, he realizes that it's just clay and it's going to return back to the clay and it's going to be gone and it's going to be resurrected. But he understands this. And notice here what he says about he waited patiently and, and of course uh, if you get to looking through the uh, the scriptures and all you look at this patience and you see many many characters in the Bible like Job that, that uh, the patience of Job and uh, uh, run with patience and uh, bring forth fruit with patience and uh, uh, so there's patience is a necessity for a Christian's life Amen. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to work. Work with that thing just like he does uh, bearing fruit because they're all together. And he needs to. When the devil comes around and and he's knocking on your door and on your heart and and aggravating you and and listen, he does. He mm -hmm. does and he does and he does and he's he's got so many ways to do it. If we can just bite our tongue and say, be patient. The Lord will take care of it. We may have to have some blows and knocks, but listen, what what David says here about the Lord in, in, in the verse there, he says, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Now this word incline, uh, it means a, a upward movement or it can be a, uh, uh, but he inclined, he lifted David up or he bowed to David and heard his prayer and he answered his prayer and many and many a times we know the the troubles that david had the lord was always there with him and of course david had a rough life but david was after god's own heart and Amen. so this morning we need to think about this patience and and how that that we sometimes doubt if god hears our prayer don't never don't never doubt that if you're a christian if you are a Christian and you're his child, he hears your prayer because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ hears your prayer and he presents it to God. 
And so you're not, you're not just blowing in the wind when you pray, but you need this morning, and I need to be sure of what we're praying and how Amen. we're asking it, and, and, and that, that it might be in the will of God and in our life to, to, to use it to, to serve Him. And so David, David has waited patiently for the Lord, and he said, He inclined to me and heard my cry. Notice here, and he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Now, some people use this as the salvation of David uh, or, or salvation. I, I, I'm not going to say whether it is or not, but I notice this in this, that, the, that God heard him. And God, cannot, God can, would not recognize a sinner's prayer on some of these things, but Jesus would hear it. But I'm going to say this, that he was in trouble. Mm -hmm. now, and, uh, and he said, he brought me up out also out of a, har a horrible pit, out of the mire clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. And of course, that, that being a Jesus, type of Jesus, that rock, set him up on a solid place. He took him out of this old mire muck and set him up on a solid place and established my goal. Amen. And so he done a great work for David. And if you look back through David's life, all of the things that he had with Saul, with his son, and with the, the people around him, it was ever, forever a constant warfare with him, uh, even with his son. His son, Absalom, wanted to kill him. Uh, and so they all, they, they, they just all hated David because that David was a man after God's own heart and he tried to serve him. So he says in verse 3, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. And so uh, again, hear this patience that we have and the, and, the, and the praying to God. Listen to what he says, and he hath put a new song in my mouth. He's, he's put a new language in my tongue. He's he has put a desire in my heart to tell others about his wonderful works and his glorious uh, doings with us. And so this is some of the things that David got by praying and asking God for these things. And it's ours. It's, our, it's ours. We don't, all we have to do is ask for it and believe him and it being God's will. And, and any time that you can pray and ask the Lord to, to help you to be a help to others or to honor and glorify Him, and, and through that, and He hears your prayers, Amen. and He'll answer it. Because, listen, that's, that's in His will. When you honor Him and when you help to, to uh, tell others about Him, that's in His will. That's why He saved you and why He saved me is that we could be a witness for him to others that are lost and honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so here he says, and he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And so your word this morning that you can remember or that you can read out of God's word Listen, it's the same word that he said here that many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. And this, this thing, we don't, we don't want to uh, uh, cause people to fear in a, in, a, in a fleshly fear. But listen, it's a spiritual fear because this flesh is it's, it's not going to change. But this, this spirit of ours is going to change. And the fear... The fear of God in the in the spirit is a good thing. Amen. Because listen, it 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 it, to, it tells the spirit, hey, listen, there is a different way. And you know, you know, and I know that there is there was fear, there was fear in my heart and fear in your heart. Of, of when when the when the when the Lord spoke to us a lot of times, when the Holy Spirit spoke to us and told us, hey. You didn't need to do that. You don't need to do these things. And so there is a there is a fear. Uh, it's it's a good fear because listen, it will lead a spirit in the right way. Yeah. So he said here, "Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies." And so 
He's saying this morning that if a man makes the Lord his trust, trust is in the Lord and believes in him and has patience and, 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 and listens to God's word, listen, it's a blessing to him. And he says he, he, he's not to respect the proud. Those that are, have a haughty spirit, those that are always boasting of their works and how they can do things and how foolish it is for you to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why what he's saying here. So he says here that he is, this man is blessed and, uh, uh, and, and respects not the proud nor should as, should as turn aside to lies. In other words, believe false doctrines and things of this nature and it's our it's our duty this morning to cycle these out and to pray about these things and 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 and, and understand what is lies and what ain't lies because Amen. listen this morning you through the holy spirit the the holy spirit will bear witness with other people that tell them things and a lot of time you say well that don't sound right well you better take heed Mm -hmm. Because listen, they're they're out there. There's lies out there. There's liars out there, and they don't care anything for you. They just want to boast to make themselves look good. So he said here, "Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to usward. They can cannot be reckoned or reckoned up in order unto thee." If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And so this morning, there is so many things this morning that the Lord does for us. And he says, they, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And this morning, uh, God's word is, uh, it is a wonderful thing. And he says it is a great thing. And and he says here, even he said, he said, I can't speak them all. Amen. They're so great. Now, sacrifices, notice this in verse 6. And, of course, this is referring back to the, the Old Testament and over in Deuteronomy. But he said, sacrifices and offerings thou did not desire. And this is what, this is what, why that the law would not save. This is why, and the sacrifices he's talking about is the sacrifices that the priest took in and presented on the altar uh, to God. But he said, these sac a sacrifice and offers, offerings thou didst not desire. And he's talking about Jesus, or in God. My ears hast thou opened, burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Amen. So this book is what he's saying, talking about the, this, these, this volume is written of me. And, and uh, this was for, he was, he was talking about this that would happen. He says in verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O God. Yes, thy law is within my heart. And Amen. So, uh, he's, he's saying that, that, uh, uh, these sacrifices that they offered and uh, and uh, things like, like this, uh, they were for a purpose. They were for a type of the Lord Jesus Christ when he would come and make an offering. These were the type, but listen, this here could not last. It was, a, it was a temporary thing, and it did not save anybody. You're right. It only caused the sins to be rolled back for a, a year and it just kept rolling them back and rolling them back and they never was forgiven. And these people that work, that done the law, that kept the law, when they died, their soul went to a holding place called Abraham's bosom and they were there until the time that this sacrifice and offering was a completed thing through Jesus Christ as he hung on the cross of Calvary and as he died, shed his blood for the remission of sin, this offering was complete and complete then. And then and only then did those people that were in Abraham's bosom 
hear from the Lord Jesus Christ because Ephesians tells us that he went there and he spoke to those people. They received him and he led them out of this captivity Amen. and he led them to heaven. Then and only then was this sacrifice and offerings that, that he speaks of here complete. But now this is a temporary thing and he, and he says in, in verse 9, he says, I have preached righteousness in the great congregations. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest, I have not hid thy righteousness within Amen. my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness, thy truth from the great congregation. Now, I want to read something else to you this morning, if I can find it real easy. In, I believe it's in Psalms 93, I mean 73, if I have my marking right, in verse 21. In verse 21 of chapter 73, he says, Thou, Though my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reign, so foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Amen. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Now this is talking about after this permanent sacrifice was done through Jesus Christ. Whom I have, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He is my strength and my portion forever. Amen. That was, the, that was the sacrifice that he made possible for me and for you that have been called through the Holy Spirit by the Lord. That was, that was his, that's what David is talking about. He says here, uh, and uh, he said, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is, it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. And so he says that he, he through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ put his trust in and then I have one more uh, in 27. I want to read. I'm going to read something to you in 27, and I believe it's in 14, verse 14. <laughs> it says here, "Wait on the Lord, be patient. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, say, say." Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. And so he is encouraging us here this morning to be uh, 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 waiting on the Lord. And, and, and now i got another question I need to read to you. In verse, uh, in verse uh, 1 of 39, notice, as we get back here. He said, I said, I will take heed to thy way, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Amen. He says, I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was, was hot within me while I was using the fire burning. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end. And the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. And this morning, I read that to tell you, to show you this, when David said here, that I may know how frail I am. People, this morning, we don't understand this at all. How frail we are. How, how sometimes we are so boastful and how that we... 
think that we're so great and how that we think, well, you know, I've got the world by, with a tail and a downhill drag. But listen, we're a frail person, Amen. A, frail, a frail people, and uh, and by only by the grace of God that we can exist, only that we can do anything because of our frailness. Amen. And uh, even, you know, even even this where he, he said he waited patiently, we do not even have the time sometimes, we think that we're too uh, great, if you would, to wait patiently on the Lord. We need to understand this morning that he's always there for us. Amen. And we need to wait patiently for him. And uh, I, I, I hope that what I, I, I told you this morning will encourage your heart because I find so many times in my life that I, I'm not as patient as I should be. I'm not, uh, I, I, don't hear from, I don't hear from the Lord like that I would like to hear, and it's all my fault. It's all because I do not respect God's word like I should. I, I'm still in this old flesh, and it's a hindrance to me. And so I, I wanted to tell you this because we need to understand this more than what we do and understand how great it is for us to be saved. Amen. How great it is. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and he died for our sins that we could serve him. Now you say, well, and I'll get to go to heaven. Yes, you're going to get to go to heaven. But the thing of it is, what's so great about it is this morning is we can walk around on this earth and we can serve the Lord and we can tell other people about his wonderful works and tell him about, you know, he's our father. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, some of your kin folks used to, back a, great, a long time ago, they used to do great things and, oh, Grandpa so-and-so or Daddy so-and-so or this, that, he did, did, did that. Well, that's the way we need to feel about God. Amen. God sent his son for my salvation. Mm -hmm. And he sent it that I could serve him and do the things that would be pleasing to him. And I have to confess every day that, hey, I failed the Lord. But, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord, he inclines. He, he listens to me. And, and Jesus takes this to him. And he forgives me. And he, he puts me back in, uh, on, the, on the road again and says, hey, you're free to go. Amen. And uh, people, it's the greatest thing in the world. We just don't understand what we've got. And so this morning, I, I hope that these words that I've read to you from the Psalms uh, will, will, will kind of lift you up a little bit and help you because you're not the only one. I'm not the only one that's having problems in this world. We're all having problems. We've all got problems, but the thing of it is, we all that know the Lord have got a Father that can take care of it. And so with that, I'll close my lesson. Thank you.